Hello everybody, I am really sorry I can't be there in person, but I hope that you find this presentation of interest. Um, can I just, uh, before I continue, say that some of the contents early on in the presentation can be distressing and upsetting, so please exercise self-care. Secondly, I want to say that um, I am not on an ego trip. This is not necessarily about me or Martin. It's just a story of what happened to us as a family but it's representative to many other families who have been caught up in terrorist attacks. So terrorism is devastating and I want you to understand the impact on a personal level. So this is Martin and he was 29 years old when he died at the Manchester Arena attack on 22nd of May 2017. But of course, Martin wasn't the only one who died. Um, as you can see here, these are all the victims of this attack. Um, there were teenagers. The youngest one was Safi Rose Roussos, who was eight years old. But there were also mums and dads who died or people who just came along to pick someone else's child up. Um, uh, you know, in one case, um, mum and dad died and the two siblings, the two sisters survived and became orphans overnight. So it's devastating on so many levels. So 18 months after the attack, because obviously the first year I didn't do anything, I was just heavily grieving. Uh, everything felt zombie-like, it was really quite difficult. Um, but 18 months after the attack, uh, my husband and I went to Manchester for the first time to attend a small music concert. And uh, I took my tiniest handbag to make the bag searches easy. But when we got there to the event, um, my husband got his tickets out and there was absolutely nobody even checking his entrance tickets, never mind bag searches. So we went and found our seats, sat down, and I cried during the concert. And my husband suddenly noticed and said, and he whispered, it's the songs, isn't it? And I said, no, it's not. I'm not li listening to the concert. And he said, well, why are you crying then? And I said, because there was no security. Anyway, we went home that day and it was near to Christmas. Christmas came and went, New Year came and went. And in the meantime, I had been researching security at public venues and came across the um, contest document, which is the, obviously the government's counterterrorism strategy plan. And looking through it, I realised that actually security is only a recommendation and I thought that just cannot be right. I need to do something about it. And then in January 2019, I set up the petition, which was meant to last six months. And uh, the, the numbers on the, the signatures came very slowly with lots of prompting and, and pushing and, and, and asking people to sign it slowly crawled up to 23,500 signatures. And that may sound a lot, but actually, you know, uh, halfway through my petition, two other ones emerged. One of them was um, bring back um, the Jeremy Kyle show. The other one was bring back plastic straws for McDonald's. Both of those petitions actually overtook me by the hundreds of thousands of signatures. You could literally see the dial kind of turning, which was incredible. But actually reflecting on it sensibly, I realised that like I was before Martin died, the general public do not think of security. They go out and about and make the assumption that when they go to venues, security is a given. Nobody even thinks about it. So I kind of understand it and get it and plastic straws for McDonald's obviously are more relevant to most people, uh, very sadly, but there we go. So halfway through my petition, though, Brendan Cox, whose wife, Jo Cox, was murdered the year before Martin, contacted me and said, this is who I am, this is what happened to me, seen your petition, I believe you're doing the right thing and I have contacts in government. I'd very much like to help you and sit you in front of the security minister and introduce you before that to Nick Oldworth. And that is exactly what happened. And um, Nick, together with uh, Brendan and I, went to the first security minister, but we needed to obviously have something in writing to forward. And Nick very kindly 
put together the five action points for Martin's Law that would be the amended protect duty that we wanted. So it's basically engaging in freely available ACT e-learning training, carry out inside and outside risk assessments for terrorism, mitigate any risks identified during that assessment, establish a counter-terrorism action plan and actually also inform staff about what's in it and that we want local authorities to be prepared and work with venues. So um, that was basically what we offered. Uh, and I remember sitting in the security minister's office in that very first meeting. And um, uh, I was asked if I have a final word. And of course, I looked straight at the minister and said, yes, I would like to actually say some final comment. Minister, as you can see, I'm only five foot short. But I did read somewhere that if you think small is not effective, you have never been in, a, in bed with a mosquito. You see, I'm the mosquito and I will be continuing buzzing around yours and the government's head until this legislation is done. I will not go away until I see this legislation happening. And I have kept my promise up to now and will continue to do so. However, in December, we have finally had an update after lots of toing and froing. Um, and we actually are delighted to see that the government have set up a two tier system with a standard tier of 100 plus capacity, which will include the 650,000 small and medium enterprises that we were more, most concerned about because initially the government wanted to go for the higher tier as a minimum and we kept saying the big venues already know what to do, they just don't do it because it's not legislation, but when it comes in they know what to do, more or less. But we kept saying we need this for smaller venues because it's the smaller enterprises, the smaller businesses and cafes and restaurants where staff need to know what to do in an emergency because we had evidence at Borough Market that that knowledge would have been really important. We uh, had evidence at other venues where, where attacks happened in the past. So people need to know what to do in smaller venues as well. And uh, so the smaller menu capacity um, tier would include that people are trained with the ACT e-learning training, which is of course free of charge, that they have a preparedness plan so that staff knows where to evacuate or evacuate people, what to do with a suspicious package, etc. But also that some people there um, who work there have life-saving uh, knowledge on, on, on treatment, you know, so that they know how to put on tourniquets, that they know how to put pressure bandages on, etc., which can be life-saving because what the arena inquiry showed is that people can bleed to death within three to five minutes. And although at the arena there was an issue around zoning, even without the zoning, by the time an ambulance arrives, people could be dead. So it is really, really important that this training is uh, there with a lot of the staff um, and it can only be a good thing. Uh, I myself always carry a tourniquet with me in my handbag now. Um, so the enhanced tier would cover 1800, sorry, 800 plus capacity which would include all the above requirements but in addition to that a thorough risk assessment and a thorough security plan and with that for the larger venues it may mean that they need to invest in more security equipment, better CCTV, um, better entrance screening facilities, whatever, you know, but um, obviously the details aren't laid out yet, but hopefully um, all this makes sense. So we're delighted with this. Um, so what are the further developments? So the government is going to establish inspection and enforcement regimes. We're not quite sure yet about the details of that, but we are asking for update updates um, throughout all of this. Um, the government is also going to promote compliance and positive culture change, um, which may need some public um, uh, form of letting people know, uh, some campaigns of some sort. Um, the government will be issuing credible and fair sanctions for breaches. Again, we're not quite sure what those sanctions exactly entail. But again, discussions with the Home Office um, are continuing and more and more will obviously come out. Um, the government will be giving dedicated guidance and bespoke support. 
And of course, expert advice, training and guidance are available on the Protect UK app, which is regularly updated. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, so our reaction, obviously, as I said, it's exceeded our expectation. We're delighted that they have gone with a lower um, 100, 100 plus capacity. Uh, we feel that is really, really important. Um, the pressure on government will continue um, simply because we've only just been given the green light, but the legislation is not passed yet. So, um, and I will not um, rely on that. Um, so during a phone call with the Prime Minister on Martin's 35th birthday in December, I apologised to him in advance to say that, unfortunately, as an activist and a campaigner, I will have to continue the pressure on him and the um, government until the legislation is done. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing my job. And he said, you don't need to apologise. Feel free to continue, uh, as I know it's important to you. Um, then we had a meeting with Suala Brahman in the same week as the phone call on the 12th of December. Uh, Tom Trudenhardt, the security minister, was present and Aswala Braverman told me that the protect duty will actually be named Martin's Law. Obviously, it will still have the official name, but they, they decided to call it mainly Martin's Law. Tom Trudenhardt, the security minister, looked at me and said, you do realise that that means your son's name will be forever enshrined in British history. And that didn't sink in at the time, but obviously I'm aware now that that means quite a significant deal. And to me, it means Martin hasn't died for nothing. And hopefully this legislation will ensure that no other parent has to fight for more laws to be brought in to keep people safe. And here are my contact details if anybody wants to get in touch, feel free at any time to contact me. I want to thank everybody for listening and um, there will be updates. I will be continuing um, updating people on social media and um, thank you everyone for your support with this. I know that the security industry, police, counter-terrorism, everybody has come on board with this more or less. Um, there will always be some people who oppose it and, and you know, Feel free to speak to me if you oppose and we'll have a discussion. But on the whole, everybody seems to be on board. It's a no-brainer. Even the Prime Minister said it's common sense, the legislation. So, and it is common sense. I can't believe that it isn't even a thing already and that um, as a mum, I even had to initiate this. Um, but I would do it all again in a heartbeat because it is the right thing to do. So thank you for continued for your continued support and uh, thank you for listening. I hope you found it of interest.